So in this segment, I want to talk about uh, food rewards, and I want to talk about delivering food rewards. Keep in mind that you need to use the right size food reward, which means that it has to be small. It should be soft so that the dog can chew it and eat it very quickly. We don't want to use biscuits. We don't want to use items, and we have videos that we're going to show you here of the wrong, what happens when you use the wrong kind of food reward. We want to test the dog to see how it takes food from you. Some dogs, you can just hand them a piece of food and that's just fine. Some dogs are, have so much food drive, they want it so bad, they're snappy at your hands. We're gonna show you in a minute how to hand food to a dog that's very snappy because <laughs> you're gonna see a picture of my hand that's bloody because I made the mistake of not testing it first. So we're gonna show you how to handle food and give it to a dog that is, I don't wanna say food aggressive, but they've got a lot of drive for a food and they're very rough on how they take food. We're gonna teach them to take it gently. So we'll start with the fact that you should be using small pieces of food, but here's how you hold it. You pinch the food with your thumb on your index finger. When you're luring your dog, he can jam his nose right into the palm of your hand, but he's not gonna get the food and there's nothing there for him to snap at. And when you want to reward the dog, you just move your thumb, release the piece of food, and it'll either fall into the palm of your hand where you can eat it out of the palm, and it looks like this. One of the things that you need to give some thought to when you're training with food is the fact that the piece of food that you're going to use needs to be small, soft, and, and palatable to the dog. We want a dog to be able to eat it very quickly so that we can jackpot rewards or move on in our training. We don't want to have a dog that has to chew big pieces of food like this that it's going to take some time for him to eat it. Plus, when you really stop and think about it, we want to go out and we recommend that you do a number of one or two or three minute training sessions in a day so we don't get a bored dog uh, throughout the day. I mean, the more short training sessions that you can do in the day, the better. But think about it like this. If you want to go out and do, say, 15 reps of whatever it is you're training, you have to have 15 little pieces of food with you. Well, if you're going to feed, if you're going to use treats that are this size, you have to think about, well, how much is my dog going to eat in a day for his normal food? If I want to do 10 uh, minute and a half reps in a day, and each one's going to have 15 pieces of food, you're probably going to, if you're using food this size, you're feeding him two or three times more food than you would normally feed him if he wasn't getting any training at all. So you're way better off to take your little food like this, Count out 15 pieces, uh, keep them in your hands, go out and do your training. And when those 15 pieces are gone, you know your training session is done. But you're not going to overfeed the dog by doing that. We like to use this Happy Howie's. And the reason we like it is that when we cut it up, it stays in little chunks. So many of these food rolls that are sold on the market, when you cut them, they break into little pieces, then they fall on the floor, then you're using them in training, and the next thing you know, you've got a dog that's sniffing around your feet trying to pick up all the little pieces that fell apart from the food. So you're better off using a good quality, uh, all natural dog roll for your treats. Some dogs uh, we call hand muggers. They're dogs that take food aggressively. And those are the dogs that you're going to end up having your fingers bit by. <laughs> CJ here, he's a hand mugger to an extent. He, uh, he'll snap when he takes food sometimes. Other times he's just going to gum you to death. And uh, he's a perfect example of why it's worth your while to learn how to deliver a food reward. And here we're using sliced chicken, and it gives you an example of why you don't want to use crumbly treats because 
you're going to accidentally drop treats on the floor, and then the dog's always checking out a training and sniffing around on the floor. So you want to have your treats be pretty much self-contained and trying not to dribble them on the floor. You're always going to have an accident, but uh, the more you can eliminate it, the better off your training will be. I wanted to show you uh, an example of a food reward that you would not want to use on your dog. Now, Rush is kind of picky in how he eats. You can see what he just did. She ha Cindy handed him uh, that food reward and he knows exactly where it is. So if you're running a training program and you're trying to do jackpotting or you're trying to do uh, uh, a high rate of reward, you could never accomplish that with Rush using treats like this. When you use uh, high value rewards, they need to be small, they need to be soft, the dog needs to be able to eat them quickly. Um, you can see how this is crumbling all over the floor. I can tell you that we could not bring another dog into this area and expect to train them with all these crumbs on the floor because it's going to train the dogs that they better run around with their nose on the floor. So this would not be a high-value reward for this dog. Maybe with a different dog it might be, but not this dog.